Let's cross over to Mplako Komane. She, of course, is uh, coming to us from the West Rand and Basic Education Minister is visiting three schools in Gauteng, on the, in Randfontein, to check on their readiness for the 2022 academic year, which uh, is kicking off in inland provinces. So, uh, Mplako, let's uh, get an update from you. How are things looking there? And, uh, of course, is the minister there? Has she arrived? Yes, indeed. No, she has been here, Lee, and uh, for, for some time she was, I suppose, getting that uh, particular briefing as to the dynamics of this particular school. And I suppose the others that she will be visiting, uh, there's two more schools that we'll be visiting after this one. Uh, but as you can just see behind me, you'd remember earlier on, the, you know, there was a big, big light. I was even worried that they wouldn't be finished before eight o'clock. But uh, seemingly teachers, you know, they've been doing this for a while. Um, that line has cleared up. Children have then, um, you know, started uh, going to classes, I suppose learning is going to um, take place today as well uh, but uh, in, you're quite correct I am with the minister and um, she's just going to you know I'm just going to ask her how is she feeling in terms of the reports that she has been getting from the provinces that are um, resuming schooling today and it, I mean is she is she happy with what she's seeing here minister thank you so much are, are you happy good morning are you happy with what you're seeing how, how are you feeling about this no I'm just excited that we have our schools reopening Schools are as ready as they could be. The reports I'm getting that from all the schools that will be visiting, what is the state of readiness, where they still have hitches with uh, admissions, when they're going to clear them. But basically, it's the first school, so I will not be able to give you a full impression about really comparing what I'm being told and what I observe. But I'm just happy that we are back to school. And you did say you were getting reports uh, in terms of admission. What is it looking like? I, 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 would, I would assume you've been getting them as late as last night. What, what, are you, what are you hearing from the provinces that are resuming schools today? You know, for instance, Gauteng and part of Western Cape, especially around the Cape Town area, they have not fully cleared the backlog. But for instance, by yesterday, Gauteng was telling me that they just have about 4,000 that were still not placed. So there are still some difficulties. But what needs to happen is that all schools must settle so that we can see in some instances parents apply, you admit, and then they don't turn up, perhaps they had another alternative. So between today, tomorrow and Friday, we'll be able to see where there are uh, 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 empty spots where we can place learners. And that's what really we want to do. We want parents to be patient with us, allow us to then tomorrow to see if we can see, we can find spaces or spots. And the parents themselves come to accept the offers that they have been given. Well, some have been given offers, they have not accepted them. So we're not sure if they have found other alternatives to the offers that we had given them. Then by next week, the province feels that it will be able to clear most of the backlog. Well, I mean, I, I do know that, uh, for example, Gauteng today would be opening that late registration. Um, as the Minister of Basic Education, because Gauteng is not the only um, province in the country that has problems uh, in the more urban areas that it finds itself in, in terms of that uh, challenge, in terms of schoolings. Like if you look at the four ways area, there's only X amount of public schools there. Are you encouraging perhaps uh, provinces? I know money is also a little bit tight. We, we had that conversation last year. Are we encouraging schools to also be built um, in, in, in the more urban areas, if you want to call it that, in the suburbs, if you want to call it that? We did hear also in the briefing yesterday that parents prefer uh, the English medium schools, if you want to call them that. Are we encouraging building to also take place there? Because a lot of the building of schooling that we've seen has been taking place mostly in townships. Uh, what, what is there a plan to, to try and accommodate that particular crisis? No, yes, we should actually, because what, and it's, it's a historic, historic problem. The settlements have overtaken us by far as a sector. If you look around the Midrand area, you have new complexes which are normally occupied by young people. We have young children and there are very few schools. The same with your Pretoria North. So you find the developers, they will build schools without necessarily having the social infrastructure. So we are already chasing and running behind those uh, developments. So it is our big plan to make sure that we follow developments, as you say, in your Pretoria, uh, uh, your Pretoria East, your Midrand area, all these uh, growing areas. So there are plans to make sure that we have more schools. But also in your township areas where there's also in migration of people from different parts of the provinces 
we are building a new school. So it is a big program that we have, but also which requires big funding because in terms of our norms and standards, our schools don't come cheaply now. So we don't build blocks and say it's a school. So it really takes a lot to build a school, but there is a major a, a plan and program. And I've been discussing with the Minister of Finance to say, how do we assist provinces, even in terms of capacity, so that perhaps through your DBSA, we also identify resources nationally and help provinces to fast track the, the, the building of schools, but also rehabilitating uh, a, a old, a old schools. I'm told this school is more than 66 years old. It was meant for about 300 and, uh, and 500 children. They have 1,100. The staff room is small. They have no hall. So even going back to township schools and upgrading the infrastructure in those schools, which, which are still operative, which have very limited infrastructure, as in this case, there's no staff room here. Uh, because it was meant really for 500 kids, and and the, the school has grown in leaps and bounds. They say it started off with about 20 something children and ended up 300, now they're at 1,100. Let me not hold you, Minister. I know you have a reading session with your kids. Hello. We'll catch up with you later you at the next much. school. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you've heard there that is the Minister of Basic Education just telling us, um, you know, she, she'll only be able to get a proper report of um, progress today in terms of uh, what has happened uh, at um, the, the provinces or the, in the inland provinces where schools are resuming today. But also saying, I think that, that, that we do know admission is, is quite, you know, it's another hot topic uh, in, with the pictures that we have seen at the various district offices, but also not limited to Gauteng, in, in mostly urban areas where they, you know, there's a fight for spacing. Um, she's telling us that there are plans. She is going to be, um, or she has been in engagement with the Minister of Finance to uh, try and, I suppose, get those particular resources um, to ensure that building does take place uh, in those particular areas. But saying there is a plan, uh, as we have seen, that the building of schools has not necessarily been equal in those particular areas, you know, mentioning that Pretoria North area, uh, Midrand, we also know in the Alberton area as well, you know, um, speaking to the challenges that they are finding themselves chasing developers as we see, you know, the, the, the big beautiful buildings that are going up, the blocks and the flats that, um, you know, have young couples that are staying there, there's children there, automatically that creates a need for schools to also be built. But also saying that even in some of these township schools, they, is, they also do need to come back and upgrade infrastructure, uh, like here at Matapeng, um, Lebanon Primary School in in in, in Mushakeng, she's was telling that us that initially the school was meant to uh, accommodate about 300 learners, but they find themselves at about 1,100. Um, I mean that that's almost. Um, or quadruple of what um, you know the capacity of of the school is. I also do know that they are also then have ha, they've also had to also um, you know do rotational learning. I mean the, the capacity issues themselves. They, you know they speak for themselves, Lee. And but we are going to be here. Um, we will move to other schools as well and just um, get an idea of how um, learners as well as educators have have settled in. Um, you know have they managed to con um, resume with schooling and begin um, teaching, considering that. That, um, children will probably be here today, not tomorrow, and so forth. Uh, what is it that they're doing about that? But we also will be, uh, you know, the course of this month, um, chasing that story about what are the engagements that they are having with COCTA as well as the Department of Health in terms of moving that 1.5, that move from 1.5 meters to uh, one meter in terms of that social distancing. The minister says she um, had told us yesterday that she was pushing for it to be half a meter, 0.5 of a meter in terms of social distancing. And I think that will enable uh, more schools, um, to, you know, to bring learners in back to that full time, um, you know, that full time attendance in terms of learners coming back in uh, every day. So that is, I think, one issue that we will, will really be looking into as well as the vaccination drive she's saying that they're going to be putting more uh, effort into vaccinations just to be able to bring in more learners back to you Leanne